Salvation is not your responsibility. Now, Spencer, what do you mean by that? What do you mean salvation is not my responsibility? I'm not talking about your personal salvation because, of course, we are saved by grace through faith. It's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is I think we have a tendency to get very anxious when it comes to talking and speaking truth because we think to ourselves, yeah, but, you know, what if people reject me? What if people don't like me? What will people say? And we, we get very fearful and anxious and, and just really down about that idea. And I just want to challenge you that God never called us to convert souls. You know, he, never, he never called us to, to cause people to say yes to him. All he called us to do was preach the truth. And we got to understand that the truth sets us free. We don't set people free. The way that we speak doesn't set people free. The way that we engage with people doesn't set people free. We don't have that, that, that power. Only the Holy Spirit has that power to truly change a heart. And so I just want to encourage somebody that, may, you know, we have Thanksgiving coming up. It's cold outside, so clearly there's Thanksgiving coming up. Got my puffy puffer jacket on. And, you know, that might be a concern for you of, you know, being a good influence and a, being a light to your family, being a light to your friends. And it can be scary sometimes because we think to ourselves, ah, yeah, but, but what if they reject me? What if they don't like what I'm saying? But let me encourage you. Why don't you start saying, what if they do? Our world is so, so negative where we think, yeah, if I'm faithful to God, if I actually do what he wants me to do and people reject me, what would that look like? Well, why don't we flip it and why don't we say, okay, well, if I preach the truth and people didn't reject me and they actually accepted, accepted it, what would that look like? I think we would have a lot more boldness in our faith, a lot more uh, ener energy, a lot more motivation to preach truth if, if that was our mindset. If it was, oh, wait, what if people actually accepted this? What if they needed it? What if people were in a really hard spot and I preached Jesus to them and they accepted it? So don't carry the burden of everybody in the world's salvation on your shoulders because you were never meant to carry that. You were never meant to carry that. You were meant to preach truth as God has called you to preach it in love because we know from 1 Corinthians that if we preach truth but we have not love, we're like a clanging cymbal. So don't be a clanging cymbal to the people around you. Some of, some of us, you know, we preach all the truth in the world, but we're hateful, we're spiteful, and we're bitter when we do it. And so we don't know why people aren't accepting it, but it's because in their ears, according to Scripture, in their ears it just sounds like somebody's a five-year-old's banging a crash cymbal on a drum set. Even though it's truth, it's without love. So let's have truth, let's have love. And in doing so, I think we can see a lot of people open up to the gospel message, open up to wanting a real authentic relationship with God, just like we have. So we're in Devos today again. We are in John 2. We were in John 1 yesterday. So if you missed that video, you can go start there. And uh, we're, we're just talking about consistency, guys. This is, the, this is the goal. This is what I want from all of you, all of us, is to just be consistent in our walk. Read a chapter a day, meditate on it, pray, and in doing so, you will create a discipline and a habit that will change your life and it will change your faith. So we are in John 2. We're going to be talking about it. But of course, we got to get our coffee in because I'm a Northwest dude and us Northwest dudes love our coffee. So we're going to make some coffee. We're going to get into John 2 and we're going to encourage, be encouraged today by the reading of God's word. So last video, we were in John 1, and now we're in John 2. And so what I want to talk about in John 2 is actually at the very beginning, and it's the wedding of Cana. And you may have heard of the wedding of Cana. It's the first miracle that Jesus performed. And Jesus performed a lot of miracles, obviously, when he was on earth. But in John 2, we get a picture of the very first one. Um, and basically, he's at this wedding, and the wine runs out. And in verse 3, it says, When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, 
each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill up the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted and the water now become wine, he did not know where it came from. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of this signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee. And it manifested his glory. This is an awesome, awesome story because a lot of times what we see through scripture is God taking something where there is a perceived lack and producing something from that. And in this case, we have a, a wedding and there, the wine was out and, and Jesus takes water, a perceived lack, and he creates wine out of it. But I love what it says at the very end. It says this, the first of his signs Jesus did and manifested his glory. And miracles done by God is meant to glorify God. Everything that God does is to glorify himself. And and my my encouragement to you is in your life, you know, there probably are areas of perceived lack that you have. And just watch because God has a tendency to take those areas of inefficiency that we have. And if we give it to him and if we trust it to him, he has the ability to multiply it and actually use it, but it's all for his glory. I think sometimes when a lot of Christians get twisted up, is they want all these miracles and they want all this thing, these things to happen in their life. And at the end of the day, it's all for their glory. It's not for God's glory. And God can see that heart. And it's interesting because after this story, right, we go into when Jesus cleanses the temple, when we have people in the temple trying to, to do things that don't glorify God. And what does he do? He drives them out and he's angry at them. And we see the, the really the wrath of God through Jesus that, that's pushing those people out. And so there's this, the difference is we have people that are trying to glorify themselves. And then in the wedding, um, we have Jesus that's glorifying himself. And so so today, a practical thing that we can take away from this is, man, let's look at what we have and what we complain about in terms of a lack of, maybe it's a lack of relationships, a lack of resources, finances. Maybe it's a lack of time. Maybe it's a lack of motivation. And just give it to God. Just make a prayer today to say, Lord, I trust you with everything. It's one thing to say that you trust God with everything, but it's another thing to actually step into that and to do it. And it takes commitment and it takes discipline and it takes consistency. And that's what I'm doing these videos is because we're talking about consistency. I mean, John one and two have awesome, important things that we need to learn that get into our spirit, but it takes time opening it up and reading it and just letting the word of God speak to you. Cause why it's alive and it's active sharper than any double-edged sword. And so it actually can affect you because it's the living word of God. This isn't just some ancient textbook, but this is something that can read you and convict you and encourage you. So I hope that that we can go forward in John 3 uh, in the next video and, and continue in this. But it's all about consistency, guys. This is what this thing is about. I'm not doing these vlogs just to do them, but I want to build a real community and I want to grow together. And I care that each and every one of you are truly growing in your faith. So I hope that you're learning. I hope that you're enjoying. Get into the word today. Get into some prayer today. And we'll see you on the next one.